Joining us right now, William H. Macy and Robert Bella from the movie Colin Fitz Lives. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You sound chipper. I, you know, it's they, that's what they pay me for. It's one of those things, you know, I don't like it. I'm not really a true morning guy, even after seven years, but I, I'm paid to sound chipper, so I do it. I know. What are you wearing? <laughs> um, I'm wearing uh, some cargo shorts and a uh, cheap button-up shirt. Excellent. How about that? What are, what are you guys wearing? Uh, we're both in tuxedos. We thought we knew we, this interview was coming up. We wanted to look our best. It was Big Jaya. Exactly. Yeah, you got to throw on a, a tux for this. Let's talk about this movie because it's very interesting. Obviously, it, we, uh, Bill Macy, you've done a lot of movies. This movie, though, has such an interesting story behind it. Robert, you're the director of this film. Tell us kind of the backstory. This was made a while ago, and it's got a lot of critical acclaim, a lot of awards at festivals, but it never made it to the big screen, and a lot of people never got the opportunity to see it. That Why is it? And tell us about the movie. Well, what happened was in, uh, in 96, um, you know, Bill and I are members of the Atlantic Theater Company, which is uh, this amazing theater company in New York City. And the whole concept with Atlantic was always just go out and make your own work. So one day in 96, even though I'd never made a film before in my life, I said, okay, well, let's just make a movie. And I called up Bill and he said, sure, why not? I, I got a weekend free. And a lot of other friends from the Atlantic, uh, Matt McGath, Chris Bauer, and some other friends of mine from New York City, Andy Fowl, all kind of pitched in. And I was able to raise enough money to get the movie made but not to finish it. And my thinking was at the time, well, that's okay, you know, I'll, I'll box it up and then uh, I'll raise more money and I'll finish it later. And what happened in the interim was that we got invited into the Sundance Film Festival. And we had a very limited amount of time to get a 35 millimeter print to Sundance. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have enough time to raise any more money. So I maxed out 20 of credit cards for about $100,000. Wow. And, it, and, uh, and what happened then was, I thought we would sell it, and I would pay back my credit cards, pay back the investors, and finish the movie, and it all would be uh, peachy keen. And unfortunately, I never got an offer that was enough to cover all those costs. So it's just but been sitting there. My you, you've had credit card companies calling you for the past 15 years. Uh, I have. <laughs> I have indeed. And they weren't very pleasant early on. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, Bill, what do you think about this film? I mean, you've done a lot of stuff. Uh, how do you think this film stacks up with the rest of your work? And why do you think oh, it's got it's such a, a cult following? Film. You know what? Everybody who works in this town has the experience of trying to get a film made, which he or she can't do. And then he or she sees what they do make. And we all look at each other saying, well, am I insane or is the rest of the world insane? It just happens. I mean, for the, the fairy tale ending is that you make your film and put it on credit cards and it gets sold and everybody lives happily ever after. But the reality is, it's tough out there in this indie market. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. This I mean, is a lovely comedy. Wait till you see it, man. It's a it's a wonderful film. I've seen I've seen the trailer for it, and I just saw that it uh, popped up on demand. So I'm going to uh, definitely check it out. The trailer made it look uh, it looks like my kind of movie. It looks funny and cool. It is your kind of movie. It's a <laughs> sweet, wonderful story. Very clever story with great performances. Hey, it happens, you know. It happens. It's a, it's a big world out there, and every once in a while, they'll choose something crappy instead of the good stuff. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes the good stuff slips through the cracks. If Bill Macy's telling me it's my kind of movie, I'm going to take your word on that. You do that. <laughs> right. I was at, this is my, uh, my funny side story here. I was studying theater in Denver one summer, and we took a class where they did this uh, theater exercise, and you, you might remember it. If, I think you kind of like invented it with Mammoth, but it's the one where you just look at somebody, I can't remember the name, and you say, like, you're wearing a blue hat. And yeah. then they look at you. Well, the repetition exercise, it was actually Sandy Meiser. Boy, that'll drive you nuts in about four minutes, won't it? Yeah, but it was the teacher, the big claim to fame in the class was she said, I played this with William H. Macy. <laughs> that was like the big claim to fame. And I was like, dude, I'm learning from the best. <laughs> if, if she worked you can with you, all of the people, some of the time, Abraham Lincoln said that. <laughs> exactly. What else is, uh, how did this movie all of a sudden get this? Like, what happened now where it's now just getting picked up? Like, you after know, all these I was, years. Uh, you know, part of it was that I was able to buy back the movie little by little over, the, over time. And then about a year ago, I got the very last piece in place. And in January, I was out to drinks with the friend Ariana Baco at IFC Films. And, you know, she just casually said, whatever happened to Colin Fitz lives? And I said, it's in my closet. You want to buy it? And she said, sure. <laughs> and I thought, you're kidding me. After 14 years, it's just that easy. And she said, yeah, I'll buy your movie. We have this this new platform uh, where we put movies out on demand. 
and it'll hit you know millions of homes through their cable provider, and you know we'll do it digitally. And that was a huge savings for me because I didn't have to deal with 35 millimeter uh, film stock any longer. So I was able to actually complete the movie for uh, far less than it would have cost me years ago, and reach ultimately potentially a much larger audience than we ever would have back in the day. Yeah. Essentially, the technology caught up with Colin Fitz, so now it's doable. It's a brave new world out there for independent films. Yeah, what do you think about that? I mean, you're kind of an old... I mean, you're like a true actor. You're not just there, you know, because it's a cool job and you have a certain look. I mean, you're there for, for the craft. What do you think about all the, uh, the new technology and kind of the way films are going these days? It's not in place yet, but when it is, it's going to make... Um, it's going to make the whole film world even more demo democratic. You'll be able to see a lot more stories that are a lot truer. Um, I, I, think, I think when uh, there are fewer films uh, controlled by few people, you're going to see films that appeal to the widest possible group of people and offend no one. And uh, they may be fun, and it's fun to see the New York City blow up yet one more time. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's, it's not scintillating. And to get these independent films out there, we need the new technology. Someday you'll say, honey, you want to watch a movie, and you'll turn on your TV screen, and it'll hook you to the Internet, and there will be the independent film channel, and you'll decide what kind of film you want to see, and it'll cost you 15 bucks, and you'll see a great film. I, can, I mean, I like that idea. It's like, like Netflix, how, you know, when you do Netflix, you put in movies you like, and you rate movies, and it'll bring up movies you've never heard about that you right. probably would like, and you do like it. Like, I would love a platform like that where it'll recommend movies that you might not necessarily have heard of, but that you'll watch and go, man, that was right up my alley. Well, here's the thing, though. You're going to have to pay for it. Netflix, you can get a film for, what, 75 cents? Well, that, that ain't going to pay for movies. Yeah, it's that's just true. not going to work. So uh, the young folks are not... Some of them are really comfortable with stealing stuff off the Internet, and the rest of them are not comfortable with paying for it. But we're going to have to pay for these films. Not much, but yeah. something. I'm old school. I don't steal stuff off the Internet. I steal from stores still. That's, that's <laughs> the way God is. <laughs> I'm kidding. The movie... The about the Internet and the technology is, you know, an independent film like this, we can get the word out. We don't have to have a you know, multi-million dollar campaign. We have you know, a Twitter page, and we have a Facebook page. And you know, I woke up this morning, and... All of a sudden, I'm getting emails and phone calls and text messages because we're on the cover of uh, Yahoo News today. And wow. you know, the Internet changes the game. It's, a, it's like the Cult 45. It's a, it's a great equalizer. There you go. It looks like a, a very funny film and a cool story, if nothing else. Colin Fitz lives. It's uh, less than six bucks here. You can get it present on demand. Go to movies, all movies, and then you'll find Colin Fitz lives that way. So check it out, Mr. William H. Macy and uh, director Robert Bella of the movie Colin Fitz lives. It's been nice talking to you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Big J. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Have a good morning. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10. On Billings' number one hit music station. Hot 101.9.